Good morning and welcome to worship with the faith community of North Christian Church in Columbus, Indiana. We are an open and affirming congregation. We welcome all as Christ has welcomed us. I have a few announcements I want to uh, make this morning. One is that um, we will be collecting our reconciliation offering today and next Sunday. So when you send in your regular times and offerings to the church office this week, please be sure to include a um, extra gift for the reconciliation offering. You'll hear more about that later in our service. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday. So I encourage you when you are gathering your communion elements for next Sunday that you might consider uh, tortilla or naan or challa or some kind of international bread of some kind to represent the fact that we are celebrating communion with folks all over the world. On Wednesday, October 7th is our next hymn sing and you can look at Travis's article in the Inspirer for more information about that. It sounds like it's going to be really interesting. I hope that you'll join us at 6.30 p.m. On October 7th. On October 11th, the Phillips Theological Seminary president will be our special guest preacher, Nancy Claire Pittman. Uh, the whole staff and faculty of Phillips is providing a worship service to celebrate the week of the ministry, and so that will be our service for that day. Let us go to God in a time of worship. Please join me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, as we enter into a time of worship today, we ask for your guidance, wisdom, and courage. Help us trust you. Help us listen. Bless this congregation, this faith family, as we strive to do your will and serve this community. Encourage us, comfort us, unite us, Make our joy complete. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn today is Gather Us In. If you have a chalice hymnal at home, it's hymn number 284. I'll play the introduction and we'll sing all four verses together. Shining, 
Now is God present and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. This morning's scripture reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Paul tells the church at Philippi and all of us, God is at work in you. Beginning with chapter 2, verse 1. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure plus the reading of our scripture passage. Thanks be to God. It is easy to determine what we value. We tend to spend our time and our money with the people, activities, and things we value most. As Americans, our interests are diverse and varied. What one deems of utmost importance, another may dismiss as unnecessary. Sure, we have some common priorities, food and shelter, for example, but our hobbies and interests or Non-essentials make up a large percentage of our personal budgets and a large part of national consumer spending. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Americans spend 5.6% of their budget on entertainment, pretty close to the 5.9% of their budget they spend on health care. We love our hobbies. But interests are so diverse amongst us, we might never agree on what items are essential. Our neighbor might value stamp collecting and another loves to scuba dive. One neighbor might prioritize season tickets for professional football games while another saves to travel internationally. These neighbors may disapprove of what the others spend their money on because they value different things. They say variety is the spice of life, but we can tend to be pretty judgmental when friends and family spend their time and money on interests we simply do not similarly value. 
The letter to the church at Philippi is one of the undisputed letters of Paul, which means that biblical scholars are fairly confident that it was actually written by Paul himself rather than by one of his followers using his name. It is a touching, emotional letter written to a church that was clearly dear to Paul's heart. We learn in the first chapter that Paul is in prison as he writes, which makes his words of gratitude and love to the church all the more meaningful. It is clear that this congregation cares about him as well. From his prison cell, he writes a word of encouragement and exhortation to keep the faith strong in the face of opposition or controversy. He uses his own experience to remind them that God is working through them, even in the midst of hardship. And he points to the story of Christ as evidence. In our scripture text for today, we find what some have described as an early Christian hymn or poem in verses six through 11. Paul was not known to be a songwriter, so it is believed to be have written by somebody else, a song that the Church of Philippi would have recognized, and it would have been a point of literary connection between Paul and his audience. After getting their attention with this familiar hymn with a well-developed Christology, Paul states, God is at work in you. God is at work in you. It might seem a simple phrase, especially following the deep theologically saturated hymn, but it might actually be the most important part of this entire passage because it demonstrates the bold assertion that God values you. You and you. God is at work in you. God has invested time and energy and commitment and love in you. You are worthy of God's attention. This short sentence tells us so much. God is at work in you, tells us that we are important to God and that God loves us. God is working on the people of Philippi and on us as an act of love, God's love. You are worth working on. Let that sink in a minute. You are worth it. You are worth being challenged. You are worth growing. You are worth the investment. And here is the best part of that fact. Even if you don't grow the way that you think you should, God never gives up and will keep working on you. God loves you so much that God wants to help you be more than you think you can. This concept of God being at work on us shows that God's investment is in us. The future plans for us are worth having, worth doing, and worth working for. God values you. What do we value? What is important? To us. What is so important as to give it our attention and our focus, something in which we want to make an investment in the future. We have different hobbies and interests and financial priorities, but do we share any in common? Of course we do. We all value North Christian Church. This faith community has made a difference in our lives and it is important to each and every one of us. 
We love the Christian education we've received here, the Bible studies we've grown from, the spiritual growth we've experienced. We're proud of the ways this church has served the community and made a difference in the lives of our neighborhood. We cherish our friendships and those we have mentored in this faith. We look to helping for other people to follow their spiritual paths and bring them into a closer relationship with God and a better understanding of who Christ is. We share a desire for this faith community to continue its proud history, heritage, and legacy in Columbus. If North Christian Church is worth all of that, if it is worthy of our time and attention and commitment, is it also worthy of our investment? I began this sermon with the statement, it is easy to determine what we value. We tend to spend our time and money with the people, activities, and things we value most. Would it be easy to determine that you value North Christian Church? Is it evident by the way you spend your time and money that this faith community is something of value to you? God has invested God's time and attention into each of us. It is clearly evident God values us. We spend our time and money with the things we value most. Let us pray. Gracious God, make us bold in our confession of love for you. Make us humble in our quest to follow you. Make us eager participants in the work you have already begun in us. Amen. Our communion hymn this morning is, O oh God, unseen yet ever near. If you have a chalice hymnal at home, it's hymn number 399. I'll play the introduction and we'll sing all three verses together. talk about feeling empty. It usually carries a negative connotation. To feel empty is to be devoid of emotions, to lack feelings, to be 
joyless. But when Paul talks about Christ emptying himself in Philippians, it's a reminder that because of what Christ did for us, we don't have to feel empty. Instead, we can and will work for God's good pleasure. Our communion table is a reminder of Christ's emptying on our behalf. He poured himself out, taking on human form, humbling himself, and becoming obedient to the point of death. All for us. Because he emptied himself, we can be filled with the grace and love offered at communion. If you feel empty, come to this meal to be filled. Be reminded that we are called to this table to be of the same mind as Christ Jesus who gave sacrificially so that we may know the depth of God's love for us. Come humbly. Come joyfully. Come ready to be filled. Let us share in communion together, and let us offer a prayer for the bread and cup. Let us come in prayer as we come to the table. Dearest Lord, you gave us this gift of the bread and cup in remembrance of your sacrifice to redeem our souls. Let us follow your example of humility as we partake of the communion elements. Let us feel your gift of the Holy Spirit working within us so that we can experience God working within us to humbly share our gifts with your loved ones. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. In a similar way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he passed it among his disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me.
As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I have a few prayer concerns I'd like to lift up. Firstly, we heard this week what the decision was in the Breonna Taylor murder case. It has led to protests in Louisville and in other cities across this country. Mostly peaceful protests, but there has been some violence and there were some officers that were wounded. We pray for peace. We pray for justice. I also want to lift up the division and distrust that is so prevalent these days amongst people and even families across this nation, over politics, over the upcoming election, even over the issue of wearing masks. And I also would like to lift up that there's still no decision on a follow-up COVID relief plan from Congress and the lawmakers seem to be in a stalemate. We pray for some answers soon for those families who are in jeopardy. Let us go to God in a time of silent prayer and meditation. God of compassion and love. Time after time, we have experienced your care and provision. Time after time, you've answered our prayers and met our needs, often in ways we could have never dreamed possible. We thank you for your faithful love toward us. We see so much pain and suffering, so much violence and poverty and despair, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the needs around us. We pray for those who live with serious illness, those with chronic pain, those without access to proper medical care, those for whom treatment is no longer an option. We pray for, pray for those coping with loss, those who are despondent or depressed, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those who are on the verge. We pray for those who will go to bed without food tonight, for those who have no bed to go to, those who have no home, those who live in fear of losing their home. Merciful God, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to show us a different way to live, the way of deep humility and obedience. You've called us to love one another and to work together with one heart and mind, balancing our needs with the needs of those around us. Give us courage to follow faithfully and with integrity, with actions that bear witness to the words we speak, and worship that overflows into our daily tasks and relationships, so that our lives will bring glory and honor to you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Luke 19, 39 to 40, we read that some of the Pharisees in a crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. 
Though we know that God's spirit will cause the stones to cry out if we remain silent, when it comes to being an anti-racist, pro-reconciling church, silence is not an option. So may our voices echo across the stones and across this land as we work toward the restoration of God's beloved community. Estar presente es más que una foto en una protesta o un mensaje en tus redes sociales. Estar presente significa llorar conmigo y dejar que el dolor de las lágrimas de mi gente se muevan a luchar juntos con quienes hemos sido empujados a la orilla. Tan solo por el color de nuestra piel, la marca de nuestros acentos o los documentos que tenemos. I tell you, if you were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Silence is the absence of sound. To speak is to convey a feeling or an opinion. This is not the time to be the absence of sound, but to convey the injustice of those feeling the weight of racism and oppression. This is the time to speak up and convey the truth of God's love and equality for us all. I choose to stand up for people of color because racism seems unbeatable. But if God can make the rocks cry out, then just imagine what he can do with people who he already created with the ability to love one another. Church, the whole earth is yearning for the revealing of the children of God. Christ has given us the ministry of reconciliation so that in our human failing to see the image of God in every child, young and old, dark and light, from across the corners of the earth, that we might allow Christ to rise up in us, to strengthen us, to show up, to speak up, and to stand up on behalf of our siblings. Your giving to Reconciliation Ministry strengthens our congregations and our communities to ensure the human dignity of every child, that every child might have access to Christ's abundance, access to flourishing in education and financial stability and in relationships across the human diversity. Won't you join the chorus in shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed are the ones Blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord. May it be so, and thank you for your generosity. In Luke 19:39 to, to recap our video, just what is the reconciliation offering? It is an annual offering of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ received during each fall to give grants to the pro-reconciliation, anti-racism initiative to promote healing within our church and communities caused by racial injustice. The Disciples Church has a history from the 1960s of sharing our resources to address the racism of our society and the racism within our church. This annual offering is the only source of funding for this ministry. You may designate your offering to the reconciliation offering and or you may give a gift to our church. The rocks are crying out. Our closing hymn this morning is For Each Day of Life we thank you. If you have a chalice hymnal at home, it's hymn number 605. I'll play the introduction and we'll sing all four verses together. Oh. 
us fears. Give us dreams and inner vision of a new world to May you go forth with humble hearts, ready to serve your neighbor and a world in need. Lead us, O oh God. Amen. Have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us and worship today. Take care. Blessings.